In the previous lessons, we learned about two entities that impact the appearance of the QRS complex. One is bundle branch block and the other one is the wolf parkinson white syndrome. Bundle branch block makes the QRS wider and adds some notching or M-shape to it. The wolf parkinson white syndrome, or WPW, also makes the QRS wider than normal and adds a delta wave at the beginning of the QRS. In this video, we'll learn how a third entity, namely myocardial infarction, changes the QRS. You must remember only one big idea here to memorize what myocardial infarction does to the QRS complex. This big idea is drowning in negativity. Why drowning? Well, because when myocardial infarction or MI or necrosis occur, it's like someone is pulling the entire QRS complex downward. We'll see what that means in a bit. You should remember that the following two rules apply in the setting of myocardial infarction or scarring. Rule number one, existing R waves get smaller in the setting of myocardial infarction. So as you know from ventricular hypertrophy, the R wave amplitude correlates with muscle mass. And since myocardial infarction is a loss of muscle mass, it's quite conceivable that myocardial infarction will also lead to a loss of R-wave amplitude. So this is what happens when myocardial infarction occurs again. The R-waves get smaller or Q-waves develop. Just by looking at the leads, we can immediately tell what areas of the heart are affected. Let's repeat what we've learned in level four. This is the right ventricle, this is the interventricular septum, and this is the left ventricle. Now let's relate the leads to the actual areas of the heart that they are depicting. Let's start with leads V1, V2, and V3. They're going through this part of the heart, which is the right ventricle. So when you have changes on the ECG in leads V1, V2, and V3, it's probably the right ventricle that's affected. As you can see here, V2 and V3 also give you information about this area of the heart, which is the basal septum, so when you have changes like myocardial infarction related changes seen only in those two leads, it's probably safe to say that the basal septum is affected. What about V2, V3, and V4? What if you have changes, let's say an ST elevation in those three leads? As you're going to learn a little later, ST elevations are a sign of acute myocardial infarction. Well, if you have an ST elevation in those three leads, it's the anterior wall of the left ventricle that's affected. So as we know, the left ventricle is located behind the right ventricle, but it also has an anterior wall, and this anterior wall is depicted by these three leads. What about V5 and V6? Those two leads show the lateral wall of the left ventricle. And what about V7 and V8? Well, they depict the posterior wall of the left ventricle. And what if you see changes in V4, the anterior wall, but also in V5 and V6? the lateral wall? Well, actually changes that are seen in the anterior wall and the lateral wall are called anterolateral. And changes that are seen in the lateral wall and the posterior wall are called posterolateral. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.